what's going on guys so today on this shogi review it's not necessarily a quickie but it's the thing that's happening i got some hair on the box we have a new two-pack from NECA it is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original movie Casey Jones and Raphael in disguise two-pack now of course this is the invisible variant where you know you have to guess whether or not it's even in the box in the first place so you just purchase it and hope because you have to open it up and reach inside to feel if there's actually anything in it so uh but seeing through the figures and the containment you'd actually get a nice little sewer thing there but if you turn the box this way we get a nice image of raf there teenage mutant ninja turtles raf in the trench coat neck Come to the back, you got a nice scene there of Casey versus the Raphael in a very nice uh, background there. Same thing here, fighting. Raphael, I assume that's when he's yelling damn or something. I know there's at one point he yells damn. I don't know if that's when he beat Casey or later on. Either way, you do have a read up right here that is basically a thing. There's your actual uh, movie turtles. That's not, the, that's not the figures, those are the real ones I believe. Um, really does look like them anyways. Old school NECA logo. There, come to the side, you got Casey Jones, Ninja Turtles, all the stuff. Come to the bottom, there's nothing. Now, this was a Walmart exclusive, however, now you could get it on the NECA website, at least for the, you know, time being. Uh, actually, that's only right now, presumably by the time you guys actually see this, it's long sold out. Uh, I grabbed it at Walmart, very luckily. And I got another one for a friend of mine. Uh, people were scalping these for an insane amount of money. So NECA said, um, hey, no, uh, we're not going to let you do that anymore. And stopped. So what I'm really hoping is they sell some more of the Foot Clan 2 packs. Because it would be nice to have a full set of Foot Clan uh, set up against the Turtles, so to speak. And then have another set of Foot Clan to go up against Casey and Raph in a fun scene. And I know they fought each other more or less, but I want them kind of going up against that. Plus, I also have other NECA stuff on pre-order that hopefully will come out sometime soon. But for now, let's get to the actual figures. Figures! Figures! I'm going to get it right eventually. That kind of looks like the Death Star, don't it? Weird. Oh no, it looks like the Foot Clan have got the drop on Raph and Casey. What are they going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is actually look at some accessories. So we're going to look at Raph's accessories first. We do have a couple of bandana options. He does have a third one that is actually on him that's draping over both shoulders. So this is the more, I think, right side draping one. We have this one that, at least from this angle, looks like a tie. This is the more left side draping one. Looks pretty cool. We got just some open-ish uh, RAF hands. Now, if you recall, the original turtle sets came with multiple sets of hands and usually came with the wrong ones per turtle. Like each one had specific hands for their individual turtle and they were all mixed up, totally not right. So these just have the little wrists. I wish they had one with posable fingers and it would be a little weird, but you know, it would be nice. Now this is actually showing a lot more green than it is. Um, so, I mean, I can't really do much about that. Let me see. I don't, I don't know if I can fix the... That's that's probably closer to how they really look right there. So, I don't know if I can fix that. There's, like, way too much blue going on before. So, let's see here. Yeah, that that, that looks way more like they do. Some, some Shrek hands, as it were. And you do have his size, just like the previous one did. Almost rebar-looking... Edges there, painted silver. Uh, it's either molded or painted in this brown. It's probably painted brown and then painted silver. You can see it's pretty rough there. And then we have the fedora, as it were. Whoa, hey, hey. And it looks nice. Uh, I think it's molded. It's really hard to tell because it's, it's washed and painted with all kinds of different browns. Um, You've got the edge and the band here. Looks nice with the little bow on there and stuff like that. It does have a hole cut in it. Let's so get a little more light over here. Got a hole cut in it just for clearance of bandana. No, the bandana doesn't stick through it. I have kind of covered this. And by the way, I did do an out-the-box reaction to this uh, two-pack for the Patroneers. So they'll get to see that before you guys see this. And then... 
Last but not least, we do have the slice of pizza that they all come with. This one has more veggies on it, anything more of a supreme than anything. Uh, kind of wish they just had an all pepperoni one. So, you know, pizza got to come with the turtles, right? Right. Now for Casey, you get a selection of hands. So you get some holding hands, which are fine and dandy, painted on gloves on every one of them, fingerless gloves, a little bit of wash on the fingers, getting a little dirty. And as you can see, he does have a hole kind of poking through. I'll turn this light just a little bit so I can get some more visibility here. He does have a multitude of holding hands. Some, the hole seems to be skinnier than others. And since he comes with such a variety of weapons, that's that. So like I say, this one looks like a much wider open hand. So something that's probably more akin for holding the, uh, the hockey sticks and stuff like that. And all of them, you know, have a varying degree of being painted well. There's just a regular fist hand is what he comes on. Once again, you can see there some uh, black paint, but you can always attribute that to him just being, you know, a dirty, dirty scumbag. <laughs> I mean, vigilante. And then another fist hand, also not painted that great. You see the knuckle paint is all off for that. So those will be the hands I use least. And then you've got the, I think I'm calling my shot over there hand. Um going to be hard to use this one effectively if you're not using like say a baseball bat each one has the wrist peg and stuff like that speaking of baseball bats he comes with an assortment not just of bats but of everything so we do get his golf bag that you know he famously carried around you can see that it's painted various colors uh looks like it is probably white or lightish gray and then the browns and the kind of red is all painted on there. A couple little silver dots for buttons or whatever. It's not the greatest paint job, but it is what it is. And then let's just go over his various tools, so to speak. So he does have what I think is a one wood. I could be wrong. It's not marked, but it looks it's definitely a wood. Definitely a driver. Uh, black paint. Possibly black Plastic, yeah, the, the handle's black. Plastic, silver paint along the shaft. Black paint all on the head, and then some more silver paint. Probably a Titleist. Uh, it's got a little kink in it because it is super thin plastic and pretty wobbly. And if you want to use it with, say, this hand. I believe this is the right one. It holds it with enough, with enough grip, so technically that does work let me see here if this other one is a tighter fit yeah this one this one's a tighter fit so there are ones with tighter grips so that would count as that so this is the one you really got to be careful with because it is so super flimsy so let's stick it in the golf bag back there and we'll look at his is this a jose canseco did you pay money for this or don't tell me you paid money for this. Okay, so I think it's hard to tell because the, there's a wash over the brown, so it looks like paint. But the black definitely looks like paint. But I don't know, maybe it's molded in the black color and then the brown is painted. It looks like it comes up over the wraps a little bit. They are worn. Even the edges here have a little bit of uh, damage to them, which is pretty cool, not going to lie. And, once again, you can hold it. So this is one of the more wider grip hands. So you can do that. He can dual wield them, which is always fun. So I've got one for each of you. And we can put those in there. Actually, I'm going to put those in handle side out, which makes more sense to me, at least. Then we have cricket bat because for whatever reason he likes a good cricket bat and you can see it does have wood grain on there that's definitely some kind of digital print or uh hydro dip because it's not on there but then there's this nice inlay there as well black paint here on the handle wrap same thing there but then again it could be that the no because the, the wood grain's coming through the black so they probably did all the wood grain and then paint it on the black so that looks good and then once again let's see if we get a big old grippy bat here 
grippy hand. So you can definitely paddle, paddle a little bit there. Patty LaBelle. I'm sorry. I am. Okay, so let's put that in there. Also handle sticking out. Then we have his normal hockey stick, which is a Sartor. Sartor? I don't know. But very similar uh, paint scheme to everything else, except a lot of weathering. Some of it sloppily applied. Tried to give it a wood grain as best they could. Here on the end, it's very nasty. This looks like a Friday job. Black wrap on everything. Looks fine. Giving a little bit of curve to it there. Which is cool. I actually do dig that. And let's get it into a right hand if we can. If we can. Actually, you know what? I have his wider gripping hand on his body. So, we, we know he can hold that. That's fine. It's fine. So, we'll stick that in here. Now, it does start getting a little crowded. You kind of have to work around the cricket bat for the most part. So, there we go. And then last and definitely not least, we have his like a goalie stick here. Now, off the top of my head, I do not know what the branding is that's supposed to be on there. But you can see it's wrapped up in all the tape. They definitely got the wood grain going on there. That does look like it's just directionally brushed, but it's beat up in all the directions. You can tell this is white tape that's just gotten filthy. I digs it. I digs it a lot. Even the end looks a little gross. Let me come over to this side. It is what it is. You see some of the mold marks, but you know what? It don't matter. Uh, this does not go in the stick because, or in the bag, because it sticks out way too damn far. So even if you got it all the way in there, it would stick out so ridiculously far. There's no point. So let's look at the actual figures now. Uh, first and foremost, we'll look at Raf because he's the one who's pretty much the same old figure. So inside, it's the same Raf. Like if you took off the trench coat, which you could do with some effort. He's exactly the same. They even painted him up inside, um, which is cool. So in theory, if you really wanted to uh, disguise your Ninja Turtles in trench coats, you could. It's a very nice trench coat. I mean, he's got like the buttons all along here. And I believe they consider this double breasted because it's got the extra set of buttons in here that would come through the front. Uh, those are just sewn. There's no holes, so you can't do that. The belt is actually adjustable. So that's pretty cool. So you can actually tighten it or loosen it, whatever you want to do. You can even potentially adjust the cinch on the uh, sleeve. The word sleeve was totally escaping me there. That's kind of funny. There we go. Change the white balance just a little bit there. Um, yeah, he's cool. I actually dig it. And then he has this, you know, rucksack basically going on here. Very military like backpack and got the green paint on there with a nice dry brushing then all the different straps are painted with like a darker green and then silver for the buckles looks fantastic you got that there there and the straps come around over to the front and you can do those as best as you want i like to try to tuck them up underneath the collar as best i can and then once again i mentioned it with the bandanas he does have a different bandana on here so this one actually splits to both sides of his head which i think is new to this version of raf i could could be wrong but for the most part he looks pretty cool and then if you want you can just tuck a sigh in his belt that's what i do and then i have him where he's palming a sigh like this i think he's got no, it's the same hands that the uh, standard ref has, but I've kind of I wanted to try to be keeping a secret, like he's palming it back like that. And you can even fit the slice of pizza more or less in the front pocket for a snack later. And then super, super duper, mostly important, the hat. So this particular bandana is not really the one that it's cut out for. It I believe it's made for. I think it's this one in particular. There's one that the knot is a very specific shape. It actually might be this one. That is the exact hole for it, although it doesn't make sense with the way he wears the hat. So basically, you just kind of cram the hat onto his head. Like it doesn't really 
do much to stay on. Okay, so let's see. Let's try to get the hole for the knot at least kind of lined up. Okay, so there's, there's that. He is wearing it kind of sideways. So you just sort of carve it on his head like so. And now you've got super mysterious Detective Raff out on patrols. Okay, he's not whatever, but you know, I like to keep the head tilted down so you can't really tell. If you want, you can try to pop the collar just a little bit, but I had him in the pose where he's basically like reaching up to pull the hat off, which I think looks pretty neat. Uh, due to the limited articulation on these guys, like I can't like grip the front of the hat, but I kind of like this look. I think it looks pretty good, even though unboxing art said it doesn't make much sense. So like get him to turn just this way ever so slightly. Like, what did you say? Like that. I think that looks nice and mysterious. And I don't think there's actually wire involved, but it does have enough body to, like, catch some wind in, in the trench coat, so to speak. Like I said, I don't think there's any wire, but it would be cool if there was, even if it was a super light, like, statue wire or something like that. But I think that's enough for Raph. But let's just bring in the previous Raph. And no, I'm not going to change his position because it's impossible to get him back in it. So there's normal Raph, and here's trench coat Raph. And so he's got these same hands here for holding the size that way. And I'm just having him palm it on this one. So it is what it is. Presumably he's painted almost identically, but I bet there's some variation. You're probably missing some of the shading, some of the, you know, freckles and stuff like that. So that's enough of Raph. Okay. So let's look at the Casey Jones, which is a fantastic figure for what he is. Now, out of the box, I was really confused by this guy. And still, even now, there's some decisions that don't make a whole lot of sense. So we're going to talk about articulation in details and stuff like that. So first up, he does not have a removable mask. You can cut all of this and pull it off, but he does not have a full face. He has eyes, and then he sort of has a chin and mouth that just kind of stop right there. The hair does look very nice. And the hockey mask does, you know, fit in really well. You even got the buckle painted on the side there. The mask itself is fully painted, which is cool. The the uh, vest, or what used to be a jacket, very nicely uh, molded. It's got, it's molded in gray from what I can tell. Then you got some dirt wash through here, painted on buttons. Same thing through here. And on the back, you can see a little bit more dirt and grime just there in the reflection. So he looks good. And then he does just have his uh, white shirt underneath that's filthy. You can just see the dirt and the grime and then some random blue paint from somewhere. Button that was attempted to be painted. And then a human chest under there without the uh, hair painted. So I'm trying to remember what the actor's name I think it's Lucas something or other. Um, it's, I guess it's very similar to his build. The head is just seemingly on a ball joint, so it doesn't really do much. It doesn't have a neck joint at all, or at least a lower neck joint, because I really wanted to give you that, you know, Adam's apple and that look. It looks fantastic, not going to lie. The sleeves here are totally painted onto the arms. The arms are molded in skin tone. Sleeves are painted. You got disc hinge, and you can see his armpit. and got armpit hole in his shirt, so to speak. That's kind of funny. Uh, be careful as you're moving things around. It just is what it is. So the inner shirt is molded in white. So this outer shirt is this. And I love the rolled up sleeves. Um, the forearm, you can see the molded hair. It's not. It's got a slight wash to it, but the hair just sort of disappears. Wish they had done a little bit more to that. There, it looks like he has a scar or a you know mold thing. Um, also, super veiny, super veiny forearms. So uh, he's definitely been juicing. And then, of course, the painted hands. This is the more open holding hand that I was talking about. And then this is the other hand that he comes with, which is cool for cradling large, wide sticks. Um, there's no bicep rotation. The rotation happens here at above and below the elbow, which gets weird. But with a double-jointed elbow, you can do that number. But uh, he ain't reaching up further than that, which, you know sucks the wrist has plenty of motion though that's actually good he does have torso movement though i cannot tell you what it is presumably it's just a single ball joint 
up in there. I wonder if he even has like abs or anything. Probably got like a a dad bod going on under there. And uh, yeah, he's definitely wearing sweatpants, and you can tell. So the sweatpants are nicely molded. There's a great texture to them, and they're dirty. So the knees are dirty, the crotch is dirty, which is weird. And then pant legs are dirty down the sides, and then just kind of all over. And then some paint peelage back here inside the knee joint is a just a single knee joint, um, unlike Shredder. Or I'm sorry, I think Shredder's a double. It, it is a, he's a single, so it is what it is. And then there is rotation inside there just to give you a little bit of movement. But there's almost no point. Big seam line down the middle because they're pants, and then you have the cuff down here, and then the white sock that is inside the ankle. So the shoe is very different. So the foot, there is kind of a foot inside the shoe because you can get some rotation on it like this. That's your only ankle movement that isn't forward and back. But that that movement right there widely determines how his feet are going to sit. Um, and he does have some decent, looks like universal joints, not even uh, ball joints. Um, so if you get him to stand straight like that, you might be okay. But anything wider than a basic A stance, you got to turn the feet to match the angle or else he's never going to stand flat. So there's that. It's still cool though. All right, so let's try to give him his bag of toys here. So you want to drape it over one arm and then just make it happen like so and you know I'm, I, I like Stephen Amell but this is the proper proper Casey Jones now I wonder should I put it under put the strap under the jacket like oh yeah that looks better let's do that number oh yeah that's cool and, of course, he can just reach back and grab whatever he needs to, except for the fact he totally can't. Like, see, look, why did that elbow have so much more bend than this elbow? No, I guess he can move a lot further, even just being weird. And just, you know, you're not going to be able to get a whole lot done without moving a lot of stuff around. But, you know what, it's actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie, it's pretty good. So let's let's get the arm out there. And just prove that he can, in fact, reach back and grab something. That's pretty cool. But for the most part, since he does have one really big weapon, let's go ahead and give that to him. And this is really sturdy, by the way. So I'm going to give him his big old goalie stick. And then... Like I said, you can just make use of the elbows however you seem fit. But it looks good and threatening. And really does just look like some dude who's out to stop the foot. And speaking of the foot, let's bring in a Foot Clan member just for comparison. So we just get one of these stupid teenagers here. So, you know, standing straight up, they'll be roughly the same height. But I like the idea that he's just going to face off and just smash a bunch of them, which is cool. Even though I think he mostly smashed Raph. <laughs> I think I need to go back and watch the first movie again. It has been a very long time. So there's our Casey. And we'll bring in good old movie one, Shreds. Oh, hey, I dropped his knife. I felt it. It's so funny. It's so small, so light. I actually felt him drop it. I might actually just not... I just stick that back in its little, little little bit of scabbard. So of course the way I've got Shredder standing, he's definitely not intimidating compared to Casey. But you know, he's also covered in armor and blades. And then, you know, I guess if you really want to bring in a Wally, just there's a Wally. I feel like I found the proper white balance all of a sudden. That is not on center. Scooch it over. Mikey's face is obstructed here. And there we go. We have the whole gang for the most part, at least the fighters. 
so to speak, all together. And now that we found out that we will be getting a movie one April down the line, that's pretty awesome as well. So, if you like this set, guys, give me a big old thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Personally, Casey's actually my favorite. Raph is neat, and I like the accessories, and I like the coat and stuff. But I think Raph is actually, or I'm sorry, Casey is the better figure here. And actually getting an accurate movie April is going to be really cool. But uh, let me know what your favorite of the NECA line has been so far. I think I need to get a few more foot soldiers, so hopefully those two packs will hit my area, or at least hit the NECA website sometime soon so I can get a couple more foot soldiers and I really want to get one of those foot weapon racks so I can compare it to the one that I built. <laughs> It'd be funny to have a separate wep a, a whole separate weapons rack for KC like he's stolen from the foot. I think that would actually be really fun. But guys go check out the rest of the NECA Turtles playlist and I'll catch you next time and remember as always keep on nerding. And I love being a turtle.